What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Let Him Peak. We're Spartan. We got something a little different and a little special for you today. What do we got, Spartan? Uh, apparently, we are going to be reacting to what did NASA's New Horizons discover around Pluto? Was it aliens? I don't know. But Peak assures me that this is an awesome video and I love space. So I'm mm -hmm. down whenever you are. So, so you ready? Let's, let me give you one second of background. For people who don't know, New Horizons was a mission that they launched years ago to go to Pluto with, like, no budget, and they pulled it off. And these are all the images and all the details about that right here in this video. So I mean, I'm so excited to watch it. <laughs> it's such a great one. Alrighty. So three, two, one. In 2015, there was a huge excitement in the space community. That is because, up until then, the best image we had of the Pluto system was this. Hubble also squinted its lens at Pluto, but it's so small and distant, the best it could see was just a few blobs of color variation. But in 2015, all this changed. That is because, after a nine-year journey, the New Horizon space probe flew by the dwarf planet, giving us a detail and fidelity of Pluto and its moons like we've never seen before. So the question is, what did the New Horizons probe see and discover during its flyby of the Pluto system? Can we just talk I'm about Alex that? McCullin, Nine years! And you're watching I know! Took that and stick with me in this video and I'll show part. you all the highlights from the New Horizons mission to Pluto. Pluto was the last of the nine traditional planets to be explored. This was due to the distance from us, but also, can you believe this, it wasn't considered a very interesting celestial object. Not even Thankfully, a planet. the New Horizons team <laughs> pushed hard for this mission to be approved, and in 2006, New Horizons launched as part of NASA's New Frontiers program for medium budget space missions. Medium budget. The goal of this mission was to get to Pluto as soon as possible, and as such, New Horizons was the fastest launch ever it being a light spacecraft on the most powerful rocket of all time, the Atlas V. It whizzed past the moon in only nine hours. The Apollo mission took 10 times as long. On its way to Pluto, That's crazy. it used Jupiter as a gravity assist, which shaved three years off the arrival time. It also used That's Jupiter a as a trip. trial run for its systems, taking some remarkable videos and images of the planet and its moons. After this successful trial, New Horizons went into hibernation mode to prevent wear and tear of its instruments. Okay, the fact that they can pull it in off 2015, is incredible. The team turned the systems back online, and every day the spacecraft sent back images of Good the Pluto they don't system. Have the RNG that this we was have an in incredibly World exciting time for enthusiasts Look at the following distance the story. To Pluto, 50, they began 50 to get million hints kilometers. of what Pluto could possibly look like, it's incredible. and saw how different Look how fast Pluto it's was going down. its biggest moon, Chera. I know. Every day, the resolution got higher and higher, and more details could be made out. Yes, there were other scientific goals for the mission, but the most interesting thing to me was what it looked like. And soon, there could be That's seen crazy. what looked to be a heart shape on the dwarf planet. And on the 14th of July, a heart. the New Horizons probe made its that closest headline? approach at only 12,500 mm -mm. kilometers from the surface of Pluto. However, mission controllers didn't get a look straight away. Firstly, the probe was too busy taking a lot of photos during the flyby. To Dude, send isn't that back just incredible? Once yeah. data transfer commenced, they had to deal with the slow uplink speed of only one kilobit per second. Hmm. Further to that, <laughs> you think there you was got a 4.5 hour latency <laughs> to. between the spacecraft and Earth. But what it did see and send back was spectacular. Mountain ranges, ice plains, glaciers, and an atmosphere. It also had a good look at some of Pluto's moons. So let's go into some detail now about what it actually discovered during this flyby. One of the first things observed about Pluto is its unusual relationship to its moons. For a start, Pluto's biggest moon, Charon, orbits very closely to Pluto and is also very big in comparison. This means that the barycenter of the two objects or in other words, their center of mass wobble around is each other. outside of the primary object. Mm -hmm. They actually both orbit around a point in space. 
Kind of like a Not binary that, planet system. But actually. both objects are tidally yep. locked to each other. This means but if you stand on one, wouldn't that the cause other won't like move tidal from heating of the planet the sky. too? This is very unusual because while some moons are tidally Depends. locked to their parent planet, the planet is it, not. There needs to be fluctuation to, to cause that. Charon is very visually different movement. from Pluto, being much darker. This implies they are not from the same origin. The rest of Pluto's moons are very small, being only a few kilometers across. So Keros is their actually a captured object. They're exceptionally circular and are all coplanar with Pluto's orbit. The geology of Pluto is very interesting. The biggest visible feature on Pluto is this giant heart shape, which wowed the world when it first came into view. It has since been named Sputnik Polynesia. It is the size of Texas and has a strong color contrast to the surrounding area. Just put that this into perspective. Is it is it's the size of Texas. Plane. In and fact, it makes up flyby, like half the planet. It was confirmed that 98% <laughs> of Pluto's surface is comprised of nitrogen ice. On average, the temperature on the surface of Pluto is minus 229 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's cold. Which means water ice would be rigid and brittle. On the other no. hand, nitrogen ices at this temperature act like water ice on Earth, meaning it can flow as glaciers. This can especially be seen around the edge of the heart, glaciers flowing into the gaps around craters and mountain ranges. The ice plains themselves have giant polygon shapes across the entire area. There are also no craters, which means it must be a relatively new feature, or a feature that is being continually renewed. It is perhaps only 10 million years old. The polygonal cells show ridges on them which are likely caused by sublimation, the process of ice turning directly into a gas. Mm -hmm. Although it's not known for certain, Sputnik <clears throat> Planitia could have formed from an impact, and ISIS filled the crater in from a potential subsurface liquid ocean. This filled in basin actually causes a positive gravitational anomaly. A gravitational anomaly is where gravity at one point is different from elsewhere on the object. The ice plane is directly facing away from Charon, which would align it up with the object's tidal axis. Due to the short distance between Pluto and Charon, tidal effects are very strong on both mm -hmm. objects. This could be the reason why Pluto is tidally locked to Charon, and the two objects can't look away from each other. Surrounding the ice plains are vast mountain ranges made of water ice, which, when viewed from the side, look spectacular. That's water so cool. ice is the only type of ice detected on Pluto that would be strong enough to support heights of several kilometers at this temperature. Among the mountains found on Pluto, there might also be some which are cryovolcanoes, one of the most likely candidates being Wright Mons. It is four some kilometers weird tall, stuff happens one at the of the highest the peaks on Pluto, solar and has a huge depression mm -hmm. found in the center. Cryovolcanoes could be a contributing factor for Pluto's young surface. Another feature of Pluto is the dark material that seems to be sprinkled on the surface in some areas. The biggest such area is called Cthulhu Macula. Of course. It is weirdly reminiscent of a whale in shape, as can be seen in this image. The dark colour is thought to be a deposit of tholins, a kind of tar made up of tholins. hydrocarbons that have interacted with sunlight. Similar deposits can be seen on one of Saturn's moons, Iapetus. So the process has been seen elsewhere in the solar system. The region on Pluto is much more heavily cratered than the heart, which implies the surface there is much older. Mountain ranges can be seen in the middle of Cthulhu Macula, topped with what is thought to be methane ices. Methane apparently condenses as frost at higher altitudes on Pluto. The last surface feature I will mention here is this region called Tartarus Dorsa. It is an extensive, highly distinctive set of 500 meter high mountains that resemble snakeskin or tree bark. They're thought to be a type of penitente. If that is true, Pluto is the only place in the solar system other than Earth where they have been observed. Even on Earth they are very rare, but some can be found in the Atacama Desert and other dry high Those altitude 500 regions. feet tall. The ones on Pluto are much taller and cover a vaster area than on Earth. 
we can only imagine what they look like up close. Pretty, that's pretty crazy. The most impressive discovery that New Horizons was able to confirm is that Pluto has an atmosphere. And not only that, but the images are incredible. Due to Pluto's small size and weak gravity, the atmosphere appears to extend high above the surface of Pluto. Right, what Earth's would atmosphere it have as an atmosphere? Be much more massive and Nitrogen, dense compared to Pluto. Methane. Hugs the planet comparatively tightly as the yeah, gravity is a lot in... stronger. Frozen the atmospheric form. pressure on Pluto is exceptionally low, however, roughly 10 microbars, or 100,000 to 1 million times weaker than the surface pressure on Earth. It is theorized that the pressure could increase as much as 18 to 280 millibars, three times the surface pressure on Mars, and a quarter of the surface pressure on Earth if the temperature was to rise and the surface ices would sublime into gases the process which we've seen already on the ice plains. The last time Pluto was thought to have this atmospheric density was 900,000 years ago. At this pressure and temperature, the conditions could even be right for liquid nitrogen to form on Pluto's surface. Some evidence of this might be found here in what appears to be a frozen over lake. At any rate, within just one year, Pluto's atmospheric density can vary by a factor of four due to seasonal variations. That is a massive contrast compared to other solar system objects with atmospheres, which generally stay pretty consistent. Well, it's a very small the atmosphere consists object, of the so same it's hard for it to hold on to its atmosphere. Right. Especially when you the have something of comparable size orbiting you. New Horizons you. made about the atmosphere is that it has up to 20 haze layers. Haze layers themselves were not unexpected, but the amount of them was. They can clearly be seen in some of these images, acting like Pretty layers awesome. of a thin kind of fog. Yeah. <clears throat> Sunlight can be seen streaming through one such layer in this photo. The shadows from the mountains clearly seen in contrast to the sunlight shining through the haze. The fact that you can even see sunlight the from layers that do far not away. appear to be level across right? the planet. Here you can see the haze layer high above the surface, but on this side of the image it touches the surface. On a side note, to me, these are some of the most breathtaking photos of Pluto, and I purposely yeah, saved them until last. You can truly appreciate depth and the scale of the mountain ranges. Pluto almost seems like a toy replica due to the extreme topographical relief. That's but why I like taking so pictures of the moon Pluto when it's so not small, a full moon. And its gravity is not strong enough to pull them down. This gives for a varied and impressive landscape and a fitting end to this video. Did you enjoy what you saw? Okay. Well, yeah, that's why I like to take pictures of the moon when it's not a full moon, because you can really see the shadows on the edge, like where the light side of the moon meets the darker, like, shadows. Mm -hmm. You can see all of the detail, all of the craters, all of that. Like, I only have a little 5-inch scope, a little 127-millimeter scope, and uh, it's, it's fantastic for looking at the moon. Um, it, it gets a little rougher. It's amazing at looking through the eyepiece at like Jupiter and Saturn and stuff. Like you see so much detail. Taking pictures of Jupiter and Saturn much more difficult with that small of a scope. But actually looking through the scope is, it's breathtaking. It really is. There's no mm -hmm. other way to say it. Like to see, to think about the distance between where I am in relation to these objects that I'm staring at through the scope. And to actually, like, try to capture that so that other people can have, you know, that sort of experience. That's where I really do enjoy it. Like, it, space is amazing to me. Like, there's so yeah. much that we don't know about our own planet, let alone the entire rest of the universe. Well, we're learning quick. Especially with James Webb on the way. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. This was a great video, man. I enjoyed that a lot. I mean, I was quiet most of the time, which tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Like, I was thoroughly enjoying that. Well, there's a bunch that are kind of like that that we could absolutely watch and review. But So hopefully, uh, the viewers, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good video if you're interested in space. And who would have thought, you know, Pluto, of all things. Not a planet. Not a planet. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Neil deGrasse can, Tyson. We can get into that, too. There's something else we can talk about. But I think we're going to wrap it up.
All right, well, if you guys enjoyed what we are doing here on the channel, and maybe you have something you want us to see, definitely leave a link down in the comments below. We will try to check it out. Or if you can't leave a link, definitely try to leave like the title of the video and the channel's name. We will try to find the video and see what we can react to. And if you mm -hmm. like what we're doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, we will see you in the next video.